What's your favorite color? Chances are good it dominates your art making and your living space. When talking about color, it's helpful to remember it can be measured, but it's also perceptual and subjective. Several pieces in the Cynthia Sears Artist Books collection examine color directly. For example, A Blue Thread Runs Through It by Lynn Scordal and The Temperamental Rose and Other Ways of Seeing Color by Barbara Hodgson and Claudia Cohen. Lynn Scordal told me she had planned to write trashy novels when she retired from a career in law, but turned instead to the more visual medium of collage. She created hundreds and hundreds of collages before trying altered books, and there's nothing trashy about them. For her avatar, she uses this collage that incorporates her high school senior picture with a British schoolboy in short pants, angel wings, and a hairless cat. She told me this captures her essence better than any photo. In A Blue Thread Runs Through It, Scordal shares with us her musings through a spectrum of blueness. She calls blue the most enigmatic and contradictory of colors. Scordal began with a show catalog for her substrate and then painted, cut, collaged, and sewed on its pages. Nearly every page has a blue thread sewn into it. Scordal calls collage a humble but creative medium that allows her to quickly create new worlds using only paper scraps and glue. It is a world she invites us to enter with observations and questions that lead us into a maze of eyes, hands, and a bottomless blue. While commenting on the facts and social ideas about the color blue, she asks, do we all see the same blue? The Temperamental Rose and Other Ways of Seeing Color was the first artist book collaboration between Barbara Hodgson and Claudia Cohen. The saying, you can't judge a book by its cover, doesn't apply to the bindings of Claudia Cohen whose well-crafted, elegant work has long been associated with fine press books. Barbara Hodgson is an author of fiction and nonfiction. She incorporates typography, collage, and other artistic techniques into her books. Together, Hodgson and Cohen bring us the intriguing world of color wheels, charts, and other ways of seeing color. Opening the protective clamshell box, we are presented with bright, beautiful circles on black for the book's cover. Below are six little bottles of dry artist pigments. With these bold, colorful circles, Cohen prepares us for what's on the inside. Many, many color wheels and charts. The first wheel we see is this one from 1799, named the Temperamental Rose. Rose refers to its circular shape with dividing spokes that plot data. In this case, the temperamental rose is plotting personality temperaments and the colors associated with them, a history we can track back to 400 BC and possibly earlier. Temperament is from a Greek word that means mixing. The term mixing was being applied to dispositions, not just colors. In the introduction, Hodgson tells the reader the charts were chosen for beauty, intrigue, or amusement. She writes about the intrinsic beauty of pigments and goes on to explain both the perception of color and mixing of color through additive and subtractive systems. She also gives a brief overview of color history in the Western world. The next color chart is from Dante Alighieri and it's titled The Colors of Purgatory. Along with the drawing on the left, they've created a 3D pop-up version, hand-painted, correlating Dante's colors for purgatory to how they are described in Dante's The Divine Comedy. My favorite color chart is the one that comes next. It's titled The Colors of Urine and Their Meanings. On the preceding page, Hodgson writes that the earliest color charts were not to understand color theory, but rather for physicians. 
Interpreting the colors of urine was a common diagnostic tool for Western doctors during medieval times. The color charts continue throughout the book, reflecting colorful thoughts throughout the 19th and into the 20th centuries. And an abbreviated take on Robert Ridgway's color standards and color nomenclature chart. Ridgway's organized color system was composed of 1,115 color swatches, and as Hodgson points out in the text, finding color names for them all was one of the biggest challenges. The last chart in the book is all Hodgson's, titled The Color of Currency. Hodgson was inspired to research if the color of currency might reference its denominational value. She did not find a correlation, but she did find that old money, usually engraved and printed on rag paper and passed from hand to hand by many over time, is beautiful. Before we close this chapter on color, let me take you once again to Cohen's exquisite binding. Looking at the head and tail of the book, you can see thread used for sewing the book. You'll notice Cohen has used the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to sew it together. It's a subtle detail echoed in the leather binding. The red spine of the book is complemented by the color yellow and blue at each fore edge. Every color you can imagine is made possible from the colors used to make this book. Both the temperamental rose and a blue thread runs through it help us think about color through history and cultures. The books are as beautiful as the colors on their pages. Thank you.